All right, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to cut a piece of quartz. This is rose quartz that I found in South Dakota. If you're ever at Harney Peak in South Dakota, go up to the top, walk around for two or three hours and you'll find some rose quartz veins. But this is rose quartz and I'm gonna show you how to use a tile cutter to cut rose quartz or really any kind of stone for that matter as long as you have a diamond blade you can cut through stone and depending on how big your blade is and how big the tile cutter is you can cut very large pieces of stone very big pieces off so this is just going to be the very first part in a series of jewelry making and I really want to talk about how you're going to get the rough shape of your stone so I can kind of see a heart in this piece of stone so I'm going to cut it and because rose quartz is also the stone of love it would make perfect sense to make it into a heart I'm going to show you how I do that process. So I got this from Harbor Freight. This is just a tile saw. And then I also have a little watering can. And you're going to periodically put water into here. This is a little reservoir that will hold water for you. And as you cut with the tile saw here, it will pull water up using this blade so you can see that this blade is now wet from rotating through that water so it'll keep it wet for you and that is critical whenever you are cutting stones because you don't want them to crack or fracture due to high heat and then cool water um, you really want to keep this down you really want to keep the temperature down on the blade and on the stone that's by constantly keeping water on it Pretty simple to use but you need to understand whenever you are cutting into a stone that doesn't have many inclusions which are this one doesn't have that many but you can see here how there's almost this white area with a very distinct line and there's another inclusion right here as well but inclusions are just the cuts or the fractures sorry i would say in your piece of stone and it could be from it dropping or something hitting into it or something like that but those are things that you don't want and ideally you want to think about when you are going to cut your stone you want to also cut out any inclusions because those are weak points <laughs> on your stone, on your piece of jewelry that you're gonna try and create. So I'm gonna to wanna to cut all of this out through here. There's also little bits of fractures on these edges, so clean up the edges. And it almost looks like there's an inclusion through here as well. So really I wanna just be working with this right here that area and try and cut everything else out so that's going to be some of the first steps whenever you're thinking about cutting a stone is you're going to want to try and cut out any inclusions cut out any rough edges any chips because those could all be weak eventually weak points in your piece of jewelry or stone that you're working with. All right, so let's get started. Remember to get your water into the reservoir and you could even pour it on top if you want to. And you're just gonna start out, I'll even put water on this, just gonna start out by trying to cut out all the inclusions. Make sure you stay to the side you're not getting blasted with water. All 
always as you're cutting as you're cutting make sure you back off and re-look at the shape every every cut you make Now remember, you're supposed to just be shaping this out. So try and get it as close to the shape as possible. If there's nothing really big, just kind of grind on the very edge of this blade so you can get off small little slivers. If you need to cut deep, obviously, try and get in a deeper cut. But really what you want to be doing at all times is just thinking about taking off small amounts as possible. If you go too deep in, you may actually make more fractures in it. This is a piece of topaz that I ended up getting a mirror finish on. And if you watched my previous video on how to cut a rough stone, then you probably want to watch this next one where I polish it and get it to this this mirror finish here and once you get it to a mirror finish you can see inside of the stone very well and this is a rutilated topaz which I haven't seen anything online about silver threads in topaz so I'm not exactly sure this is a different there's a different name for it but once I get to that mirror finish I should be able to find this rainbow inclusion and be able to see it a lot better in here so that's what I'm hoping to get to on this video and I want to tell you about exactly what I use and how to use it so the things you're gonna to need to polish your stone are a variable speed electric drill which I I believe I got this from Walmart um, and you're gonna need a an attachment that can hold diamond wheel discs and you're gonna need everything from 50 up to 3,000 grit and then you're gonna need a bucket of water and to get the mirror finished you also need to order a uh, probably a synthetic 30,000 grit mirror finishing agent or compound and that we will put on a polishing wheel and I'll show you how to use that at the end so the first thing you want to do is start with the lowest grit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my 50 grit and I'm gonna attach it to this guy right here Try and get it as centered as possible. And you're gonna take 
all of these rough edges off with your 50 grit your 50 grit diamond pad so all i do is if i'm working on my stone i'll dip the stone sometimes i'll even dip this pad and then i go straight to work all right so here's the workflow you get your stone you get your bucket of water dip the pad dip the stone and all you're working on doing is getting out getting this all down to the same level you're gonna have to periodically come back in and wet your stone wet your pad And because the pad is flexible, you can get these curves very easily. Um, and you don't have to make it level. You don't have to make your everything flat and smooth. I can still have rounded edges and a rounded surface. I just need to make sure that I'm moving the drill with the body of the how I want it to look. So if I want it to be curved, then I need to make curved movements. If I want it to be flat and linear, then I need to make flat and linear movements. But I like the curve to it. I like more organic looking shapes. So I'm gonna try and get this as curved as possible. And another thing too, um, I don't have the same setup that I did at my other place, but it's really easy to have this on like a workbench. If you were able to set this up on a table, you could easily just let it rotate and just move the stone around it. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just lay this on the edge of this bucket so that I can kind of maneuver the stone a little bit more. So I've been at this one for about 30 minutes now, and I think the low grit, your 50 grit, is probably going to take the longest, and obviously that's not, you know, a perfect heart, and I may even come back and, and cut some of this again now that I've kind of rounded it out more, but the main thing you want to get on your 50 grit or the lowest grit is you want to try and get out all these divots. Now I'm not probably going to be able to get all of these divots out um, unless I just want to spend majority of the day getting down to this and really I don't think you would be able, I mean you could maybe maneuver maneuver the stone around on the tile cutter and maybe get everything level but it, it 
it cuts so deep so quick with that tile cutter that you may just keep making more smaller nicks and divots in here and then you'll have to smooth that out so i really think getting it down with the 50 grit is the best way but it's going to take a while for you to actually get all of these divots out so just be aware of that and the heart of the stone which of course is seven to seven and a half on the Mo scale which is the hardness scale for rocks gems um and this one this one's gonna take a while just because it, it has quartz in it you can see that inclusion right here that breakage and then i did find another inclusion that's not as deep a little fracture that kind of comes up through here um but you'll notice that as i start getting to these higher grits after i get off of this 50 grit and go to the, some of the higher ones that it will get a lot clearer a lot smoother and you'll be able to tell that um the lowest grit is probably going to take you the longest all the other grits after the lowest grit will will come by a lot quicker but i am going to try and get some of these divots out and then i'll show you going to the higher grits the 150 400 thousand 2000 3000 and what those all look like so i'm going to keep hitting this with the 50 grit a little bit longer and then i'll go straight into the 150. all right now i'm doing 500. and honestly i may have needed to spend a little bit more time on the 300 at, in some certain places and this is why this process cannot be rushed um, this is why a raw gem is so much less in terms of value than a cut and polish gem. The cutting and the polishing process takes a lot of thought and it also takes a lot of work. Um, and that's why people spend a lot more money for something cut and polished well. So you really really need to be as thorough as you can be with this process but you will still get an idea by the end of this video on just how well um, polishing a stone even up to 3000 grit will look and why um, you really need to understand jumping from different stages and what they will do There's 2,000. I don't have much memory left on my phone, so I'm going to do 3,000 here real quick. It's 3,000 grit. Diamond wheel. And let's hit it. Alright, so I had to cut the video short yesterday because I didn't have enough storage but this is a rushed version to 3000 grit till there's still a good amount of scratches on here so I'm gonna go through and see if I can get everything down to 3000 Something that I should have done is I should have dried it off through the different grinding stages or through the different grit stages 
and made sure that there were no distinct lines from a previous stage. See, I don't know which, I don't know what grit that happened on, but it should look all uniform and even. So some areas you can tell are smoothed out to 3000 and those are the ones that are at the highest point where some of these that are kind of divoted in here, they still have scratches in them. So I need to get those scratches out. And you can see on this side here too, working with 3000 grit, it might take, it might take days to buff those out using a 3000. It would be nice to know exactly what grit that's at, if it's an 800, a 1000, 1500, because then I could work at that stage and get that surrounding area all down and then I can move up to a higher stage, which that just won't allow me to do right now. But eventually you want to get to the point where whenever you uh, mirror polish this, put that mirror finish polish, should look like, it should look wet pretty much all the time. And you should be able to see very distinctly inside of it. So that's what I'm gonna keep working towards. I've maybe put another 30 minutes with the 3000 grit. I'm just gonna keep hitting all these divoted areas. So you'll notice in some areas you'll get this white streak or white marks that'll appear after you've polished it with a certain diamond pad and these white marks here are because they're forming here because it's very coarse there still it's not at the right grit yet so I'm using a 3000 grit and really I should be using maybe a 1000 or an 800 and get it to this level right here where this white's at where it keeps the resin keeps getting collected into these grooves because it's still too deep there and it's not going to get buffed out from the 3000 grit so I have to go lower to get these areas out if I wanted to get them out same with you can see here these white areas that'll pop up and that's because that resin from the diamond grit pads will push their way into these areas um, but I'm not gonna work on those areas they're a little too deep so I'm just gonna hit the rest of this with a 3000 and then I'll hit it with the mirror finish and you'll see those line those lines again when I hit it with the mirror finish it'll stay in those lines because that powder is so fine but this is almost done at 3000 now got a little bit left to go just wanted to share that tip with you. all right I think this is about as good I'm going to get with 3,000. There is a rainbow inclusion in here. If I can show you guys. I gotta hit it at the right angle. Uh, of course, that glare is gonna stop it from being shown but there is a rainbow inclusion right here that you can catch at the right angle it looks pretty cool oh here's a good angle there it is yeah pretty cool and then this 
It's almost like silver. This looks like silver through there, which is also pretty cool looking. But uh, yeah, so that's 3,000. It does have water on it right now. I'll dry it off real quick and show you what it looks like. Still has a good amount of shine on it. You can tell where it's still has like some lines there, but I think it's from the way I pushed into it because it still looks polished. But it's just, I think I made some divots in there because I was pushing too hard. Because it still seems smooth. But that's 3000 grit, dry. So now I'm going to put the mirror finish on it. We'll see what it looks like after that. Not bad. All right, so this is synthetic diamond grit up to 30,000, I think is the uh the grit for this but it is a mirror polishing finisher I just added it to this felt pad and um, all I'm gonna do is buff up the stone on this felt pad and that's how we're gonna get the mirror finish on this so it's gonna go from 3000 grit to a 30,000 grit we'll see how it looks after That is at a mirror finish. The stone would be a good one to burnish with or to just hold in your hand. It feels really nice. <laughs> but that is how you get a mirror finish on a stone.